Today, I'm gonna to try to do something difficult. I'm gonna to try to change the way you think about LS motors. Answer me this, what do all these cams have in common? Stock cam, nitrous cam, positive displacement blower cam, centrifugal blower cam, and turbo cam. What do they all have in common? They're all turbo cam. And I've got the dyno data to prove it. In this video, I'm gonna share some of the dyno data I've generated over the last 25 years doing nothing but direct back-to-back -back dyno tests. I mean, I've tested a ton of stuff. Turbos, blowers, nitrous, cylinder heads, camshafts, intakes. You name it, I've probably tested it. And not just on LS motors, on all of the engine families. Ford, Chevy, Dodge, Toyota, Nissan, Honda. I've tested a ton of stuff. And you know what? They all have one thing in common. They all respond exactly the same to boost from a turbo. I have the dyno data to prove it. In addition to that, I'm gonna cover some of the common questions I get about camshafts. Hey, I'm going to the junkyard. I'm gonna grab a 5.3, add cam springs and boost. What cam should I run? Or I've already got a motor that has a cam in it. Can I just add boost? Or the final one, I've got a motor, I'm buying a cam. Can I buy a turbo cam and run an NA till I can afford boost? I'm gonna answer all those questions. But after we take a look at the dyno data, you can answer them for yourself. Because remember, I'm trying to change how you think about LS motors. Okay guys, I'm gonna start you off on your new path toward understanding LS motors in a different way. And this is the power output of a stock 5.3 liter. And this is important because this is how I want you to view LS motors. Don't worry about what cam this has. Don't worry about what combination is. None of that makes any difference. For the record, this is a 5.3 that I went down to the wrecking yard and gathered up. We also uh, put it on the dyno with long tube headers, a Mazir electric water pump, and an open throttle body the way that we normally run it. And it makes 350 something horsepower, 300. Wait a second, what are we doing here? Yeah, 352 horsepower. 378 foot-pounds of torque, which is kind of typical. It's kind of what they do. But the important thing I want you to remember is here. Here's what happens when we add boost to this thing. Now, immediately everyone's going to ask, how much boost was that? How much boost did we run? And while that's a good question, for this discussion, it really doesn't matter. Because, and I'll tell you why. What I want you to look at and, and the direction that I want you to start going after all of this discussion is take a look at the shapes of the power curves. You'll notice that they're eerily similar. And that's because boost is just a multiplier of what you have. And we'll find out, and, and the reason for all of this is we'll find out that happens regardless of the camshaft. As a matter of fact, it happens regardless of the combination. None of that makes any difference. This is a stock one. Now, you have to ask yourself, if, you're, if we're still thinking in terms of cam timing, did GM ever design the factory 5.3 LM7 cam to run boost? When they were having their meetings and doing their cam designing, did they say, you know what? In 10 years, guys are gonna be going down to the wrecking yard like crazy. They're gonna be scooping these things up and adding boost to them. And we should design this cam so that it works well as a turbo cam for that should it happen later on. They never said that because it didn't happen. But they didn't have to. They designed that cam for a low RPM truck, towing, emissions, all the stuff that they put in, in the design, but it had nothing to do with turbocharging. But guess what? Even on a stock cam that was not designed for boost, it works well with the turbo. Let's take a look at some other ones. Okay guys, you need more convincing? Here is a completely weird combination, but it just goes to show you that anything that you add boost to is gonna respond this way. So what we have here is an LS3 block with a 4.8 crank. Yes, the de-stroked one that everyone loves. And we even ran a turbo with it. And I even had ported uh, rec port heads on it from TrickFlow. But with this combination, I ran it with an LS9 cam in it because we ran it with a variety of different cams. That wasn't the cam of choice. But an LS9 cam, as you know, is not a turbo cam, right? It is a blower cam. It's a positive displacement blower cam, for that matter. And it's a factory cam, so it's mild, it's designed for a blower, it's got everything wrong. It's on a bigger displacement application, so it's got everything wrong 
uh, <laughs> going against it as a turbo cam. And yet, when we add power, even on this weird combination, even on this hybrid combination, so we have our NA power output here. So we made 512 horsepower. And then when we added boost from our turbo, look, so that's the horsepower and torque curve. If you'll notice, again, like they always are, as long as the boost is consistent, the curves are very similar. The torque curve looks the same as the, as the NA torque curve, the power curve looks the same, and that's what happens. Regardless of the boost, the only time that doesn't happen is if there's a problem somewhere. If the, the turbo has to be sized so it's responsive enough to make the same amount of boost down low as it does through the rest of the curve. It also has enough uh, flow capacity to support that boost level and intended power output at the top. That just means that you've sized your turbo correctly. And if you have, and you can produce the same amount of boost through the whole curve, the only thing that will happen is you will elevate that curve. A consistent amount through the whole curve. And so here's a little secret. If you want to know how much power your NA motor makes at let's say 14.7 pounds of boost, here is a little shortcut. If you take a look at this curve, at, the, at this power curve, and look over here where it's registering the horsepower numbers, if you have your NA curve, if you go over and erase all those numbers and double them, that's what, your, that's what your motor, that's what the power curve will look like of your motor at 14.7 pounds. Because basically you're going to double that power output. Again, if everything is right, and to, to be right, you have to have a good intercooler, you have to have the right amount of timing, which means you have to have octane in the thing. You also have to have a consistent boost curve. Uh, you have to have the right air fuel. But if you've done your homework and done everything right, that's what can happen. You can have, you can double the power output at 14.7 pounds. But the most important thing is that even at that power level, at really at any power level, the same thing is going to happen, whether we run seven pounds or 10 pounds or 12 or 20, and I'll show you later on in another example where we run a ton of boost, and the same thing happens. The shape of the curve stays exactly the same. It doesn't matter what cam you have in it. So now, as you can see, I'm talking less about cams because the cam is all wrong for this weird combination and for, and for turbocharging because it's a blower cam. It was designed for all sorts of other things. It's all the wrong cam. But guess what? When you add boost to it, the same thing happens regardless of the camshaft. So even on this LS9 application on a hybrid deal, it still works. So you need more convincing? Let's take a look at another combination. Okay, you guys, you still need more convincing? Let's take a look at another combination. This was actually one of the Big Bang motors. It was the 5.3 that I did for Truckin' Magazine back in the day. And the first thing you notice is, hey, this motor made pretty decent power. This is the NA power output of a 5.3, so it did really well. But the important thing for this combination is that it obviously did not have a turbo cam in it. It had, I think it was an XER281, if I remember right. I'm gonna check the notes just to make sure so nobody calls me out on that. Uh, Comp 281 LRR, okay, so that's a good cam. I like that cam. Uh, 617, 624, 231, 239, 113, definitely not a turbo cam. So it was an NA cam, which is why this thing made so much power and actually aspirated as a 5.3. It had good stuff on it. But let's take a look and see what happened when we added some boost. So let's add like a little bit of boost. Hey, look at there. And I know everyone's gonna yell at me for shutting off early, but we did shut that thing off early, like at 62 or 6300, which it kind of makes me upset that I didn't rev that thing out because it was a 5.3 and it was making good power and would have continued to make power. I should have ran it at least past 6500. But here's what I wanna show you guys. Um, this is a good example because we run it at a bunch of different boost levels. So there's like five and a half pounds and then 13 pounds and then 18 pounds, and then 21 pounds. Do I, do I have any more of those? Oh, there we go. There's 23 pounds. So as you can take a look at, you can see that as we added boost, nothing changed in the shape of the power curve. It mimics the normally aspirated power curve, which it will always do, again, if everything's right. And everything was right on this motor. We had a good intercooler, although on this one, we did not run ice water which we should have, it would definitely would have made more power. And it eventually ended up making over 1300 
at a very high, a very high boost level, I think 26 or 27 pounds, something like that. So it did really well. But the important thing is it did not have a turbo cam in it. And would it have made more power with a turbo cam? <laughs> you guys can argue all you want about that. But here's something important to note. If you have a camshaft in a motor and you run it naturally aspirated and you put another camshaft in it, I'm not even going to designate them because it doesn't really matter whether one's a turbo cam, one's an NA cam, one's a nitrous cam, whatever it is. For right now, we'll just say they're cams, cam A and cam B. If you run a motor, NA, and it has a cam in it and you put another cam in it and that cam makes more power NA, it will make more power under boost. It does that every time. Every time I've tested in the last 25 years on any engine family, in any combination, uh, anything, that's what happens. If it makes more power NA, it absolutely makes more power under boost. It doesn't matter if the cam that makes less power is a turbo and the cam that makes more power is an NA and it makes more power on the NA application. When you add boost to that, the turbo cam doesn't all of a sudden become magic. That doesn't happen. Although we'll talk later on in the conclusion about when that kind of thing is possible. There's no magic, it's just a very dedicated combination, uh, a series of events where that would have to happen before a cam that made less power NA could potentially make more power under boost. But, you know, there's, there's a caveat there, so we'll, we'll discuss that in the, in, the, in the conclusion. But if we take a look at the, these power curves, again, no turbo cam, the thing keeps going at all of the different boost levels, the shape of the curve stays the same, and that's what happens. The reason that that happens is because boost is just a multiplier of what's there. So again, think NA combination, and then think boost, multiplier. It doesn't matter what cam you have in it. Let's take a look at another example. To prove to you that this is not uh, specific to the LS motor, let's take a look at another application. This one's a Ford, although I have a ton of others, Chevy, big blocks, small blocks, rotaries, whatever, it doesn't matter. This is a five liter Ford, which is kind of the one that got me started in this industry, which is super cool. And this one happens to have my favorite five liter cam, which is the Extreme Energy 274 cam. That's a 224, 232, like a 555, 565 lift. This thing had heads and uh, an intake manifold on it. But again, most importantly, take a look at the shape of the curve. That's what it does. Here's what happens when we added a single turbo. Ah, man, I kind of missed that, didn't I? It doesn't make me, it doesn't do any good for me to add the same thing that I was just looking at. Well, there we go, there's the turbo. Look, it added power everywhere. The shape of the curves are the same. It looks like it's the same motor, <laughs> except that it's, everything's higher, because that's what turbos do. An, ex, an Extreme Energy 274 cam, as much as I like it and have used it for, on a lot of things on nitrous motors and blower motors and NA motors and obviously turbo motors, uh, as much as I like that cam and I've run it on stuff, it's not technically a turbo cam, so, but, Technically, it is a turbo cam because we just added boost to it. So you can see what the turbo does. Again, whatever the NA power is, whatever's happening down there when you add boost, now it's happening up here. That's what happens. That's why every cam is a turbo cam, even on a Ford. So now let's take a look at another LS. Okay, so far every cam that we've looked at has been a non-turbo cam. It's been some other kind of deal, usually an NA cam or something. So let's take a look at does the same thing happen when we actually run a turbo cam. This is another six liter Big Bang motor that we made a ton of power with. I think we made 1543 with this thing, but it made about 550 NA as we can see here. And this thing was equipped with a stage three twin turbo cam from Ryan Tooley Racing because we ran twin S475s on this thing. So now let's take a look and see what happens when we ran boost. Take a look. Oh, hey, look. Let's find out what happens when we ran even more boost. Hey, look. Let's find out when, let's add all the boost. Yeah, this is, yeah, 29.2 pounds. What is that? Yeah, 1543, nice. So that's where I ran out of uh, map sensor because I only had a three bar map sensor and that's as high as that we could go. But as you can see, again, just like with the smaller 5.3 and with every other motor that we've shown as you add boost, the same thing happens. The shape of the curve stays the same. There's no magic. 
even though this actually was a turbo cam. But the reality is that I have a place back there that I call Camelot, and I'll show you a photo of it. I call it Camelot because there's lots of cams there. So that's how it got the name. But I could literally walk over there with my eyes closed, and as long as I was grabbing from the right spot where the LS cams are, I could grab any cam without looking at it, put it in a motor, and run boost on it, and guess what would happen? It would work just fine. It would work exactly the way that the NA motor works plus boost because that's what every cam does. You see, it doesn't matter. Now, if you, if you are, and I'm not telling you that the manufacturers are telling you that they have turbo cams and that they don't, that, it, that there's no magic there, that they shouldn't be selling turbo cams that you guys are all getting ripped off. I'm not saying anything at all like that. If you are building a dedicated turbo motor and you want to get a turbo cam, you should get a turbo cam. What I'm telling you though is, for instance, we talked earlier in the introduction about these different scenarios. So if you're going down to the wrecking yard and you're going to pick up a motor and you're going to run cam springs and boost on it, then get a turbo cam. You've got a turbo, get a turbo cam. It will work just fine. But also know that you don't have to get a turbo cam. If you get an NA cam, it will work every bit as good. It will work as good as whatever the NA combination is. If that turbo cam makes less power, and if that NA cam makes less than the turbo cam, then it will make less under boost. If it makes more, it will make more under boost because that's what they all do. Now, the other situation I mentioned is if a guy has a motor already and has a cam in it and he wants to add a turbo, does he have to add a turbo cam? And the answer is no. And this is, a, this is even the case if you're trying to max that turbo out. Now, Normally in a situation, I would definitely recommend a turbo cam when you're trying to max the turbo out. But the reality is that if you have a 5.3, for instance, and you get an LS6 cam or an LS9 cam or a sloppy stage two cam or any kind, of, any kind of cam you put in there, and that cam will allow you to max the turbo out. Let's say you have an S475 or a 7875, and you have something that would make, the turbo has a potential to make a thousand horsepower. Well, if that camshaft, whatever you put in it, will allow you to get to 1,000 horsepower and top that turbo out, do you think that more camshaft is going to help you? Do you think it's going to allow you to make more power? Let me know in the comments, especially the cam experts. Let me know if you think revised cam timing, if you max the turbo out, if the turbo doesn't have any more capacity to support any more power, do you think that the cam will, do you think that adjusting the, the magic valve events are going to help you improve the power output of that cam. I honestly don't think so. The only time I think that that's possible, and I told you that I would get to this, is that if you're in a situation like class racing where you have a, you're limited in turbo sizing, and normally like on a single turbo like that, you usually the hot side goes away before the, before the compressor side does. So if you have a bunch of back pressure on that side, Maybe you can fiddle with cam timing to try to get rid of some of that back pressure. More often than not, guys try to dump some of that to get rid of it. But in that situation, you might be able to make more power. But if you were to look at that NA, what would happen is you probably would lose NA power too. Because the, the single biggest determining factor of back pressure in the system is actually the size and, nat and the power output of the naturally aspirated motor that you're applying that to relative to the flow rate of that hot side of the turbo. So what, what happens is you get back pressure because you're trying to flow a lot of exhaust through this, what is it, a relatively small hole. The more exhaust that you try to flow, the more back pressure you get. And you do that with a bigger motor and a more powerful motor. So if you run the same turbo on a 4.8, it will have more back pressure if you run it on a 6.0, on a more powerful 6.0. It will also make more back pressure if, if you run two cams and one of those cams make more power than the other cam, the, the cam that makes more power, regardless of whether it's a turbo cam or an NA cam or a nitrous cam, the one that makes more power will have more back pressure. Now, turbo guys, I want you to respond to that because I know that there's going to be situations where not, that's not true. So I, I want you to jump all over me and tell me where, when that's not true because that'll be an interesting discussion. But remember, here's the takeaway. I hope you guys are thinking differently about it now. Make sure to comment and let me know. But you should be looking at the NA power output, whatever that is, multiplied by boost. After all that discussion and all the dyno data, what's the takeaway from all this? I know what I was hoping would happen. Here's what I was hoping. You would tend to look at the combination of the engine and the power output of the naturally aspirated motor rather than look at the designation of the camshaft. Think about it this way. If you have a motor 
and you grab a camshaft and you just do it with your eyes closed and you take a look at it like we were talking about with Camelot over there and you take that camshaft and put it in your motor and you run it and it makes this, this amount of power. And then you go grab another camshaft and you put it in and it makes more power. And that's the NA combination. What's going to happen under boost? By now, after all that data, you guys should know. If it makes more power NA, it will make more power under boost. I don't care what you designate those cams. I don't care if you say that one's an NA cam and one's a turbo cam and one's a blower cam, a nitrous cam, whatever it is, I don't care about that part. What I care about is if you have a cam and it makes more power NA, it will make more power under boost. 99.9% .9 of the time, that will be right. And the reason that I leave that little bit there is because I know that somewhere, somehow, somebody's going to show me some sort of specialized situation where that didn't happen or doesn't happen. And I'm, I'm, I, I'm open to it. It's just that in the 25 years I, that I've been doing this dyno testing and I've done thousands and thousands of tests on forced induction stuff, turbos, blowers, all of this stuff, and cam swaps and endless cam swaps, there's never been a situation where I ran a test where I, I ran two or more camshafts, sometimes I've run as many as 30, and the camshaft that made more power NA, it's never happened that it didn't make more power under boost. Every time it's done that. So somebody, until somebody shows me otherwise, that's what I'm gonna go by, and that's what I'm gonna tell you guys you should go by too. If you have a turbo, you don't necessarily have to have a turbo cam. You can have whatever cam you want that makes the power that you want, and then when you add boost, it will just multiply that power curve, whatever it is. Again, two, two cams, you don't look at them, you don't see what they are, you don't know the designations. Whichever one makes more power, that's the one that you should choose. Don't worry about it being a turbo cam or not. The cam that you have in your motor, if you have a turbo on it, voila. You have a turbo cam, and remember, every cam, is a turbo cam. Thanks for watching guys. Again, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Let me know what you think. Make some comments. Tell me if this is all BS. Tell me if you think you, you learned something here. Show me an example of where this wasn't the case. Make sure you show me. Thanks for watching.